Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I took these logos and gave them Comic Sans redesigns. If you're new here, I'm Tyler, aka Tyler Talk, and on this channel I design, redesign, and critique logos. So if that's something you're into, then definitely feel free to give me a subscribe. Now this video was originally filmed on a live that I did on YouTube, and I'm still kind of working out the technical part of that. So the audio was a little bit different and not as great as it would be if I used my regular camera microphone, but trust me, we're working on it. So today I did four logos, and the first one I did is a McDonald's. I'm just gonna like take the paintbrush tool, and I'm gonna grab the red. I've seen a lot of comments about how I don't do it the correct way, I don't do anything like, if you were an actual designer, you wouldn't do it this way. And like, that is 100% true. If I was actually designing this logo for McDonald's to make in Comic Sans, then I definitely would like make this an Adobe Illustrator. I would make sure that everything was in a vector and perfectly fitting, kerning and everything right and everything like that. But at the moment, I am not uh, going to be making any of these for McDonald's or any real company at that matter. So for now, I'm just kind of like not really doing this how you sh technically, I guess, should be doing this if you were a real designer for a client. All right, so I'm basically just gonna take that layer, the middle layer that I made, and I'm gonna down the opacity on it. So that way I can still see like what I'm working with above, but I can also see the original logo below it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rasterize this layer. What that lets me do is like play with this as if it's its own object. So I can like make the sizing be um, similar to match with the one underneath it. I think that looks pretty good. Um, what I might do though is go back when I had it be just text and I might make this like not bold. and see if that's a little bit better once I rasterize it because uh, if you could see under there, the like M from the actual McDonald's writing was kind of like cut off by the bigger letter. So we don't want that. So I think I'm going to do it like this. And then for the actual writing part underneath it, I'm going to make that be in bold instead of regular. not an exact science to do this. I might honestly do a little less spacing in between the words and then go ahead and rasterize this. And then I'm gonna move this over here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide all of these layers. And I just wanna see like how close, okay, so it's pretty close, the M and the, uh, the D to the, M. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my original one and I'm going to grab this rectangular selection tool and I'm going to place it just above the D, so like that, and I'm going to take it all the way over until it's just below the D, or all the letters at the bottom. And what that's going to do is this is just a selection right now. I don't have it on any layers at the moment. So right now the layer that's selected is this red. So if I were to do anything with this, like if I deleted it, it would delete the red layer. And so what I'm going to do is just go to the M layer and hit delete. And that gives you that like clear defined line between the text and the bigger text at the back. So I'm just going to move, oops, I'm just going to move this down just a hair and maybe over a little bit. And that is the final McDonald's logo in Comic Sans. That one actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it would once it was on the live mock-up. The next one I did is Pac-Man. And this was suggested on the live and I decided to do this one in Illustrator. So, oh, nice. Okay, so this is already a vector. So that's good because what we can do is we can take these out. I'm gonna focus on making the different letters. Okay, so now what we need to do is I want to go ahead and create outlines and I'm gonna ungroup them. I'm gonna move all these up here and I'm just gonna get them in the right sizing. Okay, 
Like, so basically all of them have this like squared off bottom and they're filled in. So I need to get the pen tool out here. And we need to just start filling in all these shapes. That looks like the most pitiful Pac-Man that I've ever seen. <laughs> That's not better. Whatever, okay. Now that we have that done, what I need to do is get grab this thing called the Shape Builder tool. And what that does is it just puts things, it makes shapes like be together. So like see how they're all different right now. So I'm just gonna take the Shape Builder tool and just make all those be together. I'm gonna go ahead and give all of these a black stroke. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, group these back together. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy one. And I'm gonna paste it in place. And I'm gonna make it be white. And then I'm gonna move that like up and over. And then I'm gonna take the yellow one and I'm gonna make it be, okay, I'm gonna move this one down and over. And then I'm gonna edit, paste in place. Okay, honestly, that looks pretty close already. So now what we need to do is lines here. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna get a pen tool and we're gonna have this be zero and a black stroke of seven and like kind of try to mimic that. Obviously it's not gonna be exactly the same because Comic Sans is um, kind of curly. Done. That, is, that one was really fun. This one actually looks pretty sick. The next one I did is Oreo and it has a lot of like drop shadows and gradients in it, but here's how I did that one. I'm gonna go ahead and type out Oreo and Comic Sans and I'm gonna rasterize it now. So then it's already like the size I want it. And if I go up and down, it doesn't like blur it too much. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it over top of this and I'm gonna uh, rotate it. And the way that we can get it to be like this is we're gonna go to edit, uh, transform and warp. Uh, that's gonna give us this kind of like warped uh, effect that we want to see in this part. The only thing on Photoshop compared to Illustrator is that it, when you warp it, it does tend to like be like things like this. Like we don't want that O to look like that, <laughs> obviously. So let me go back to the warp. Okay, that looks about right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start adding um, some different things to it. So I'm gonna add a stroke around the whole thing that is this blue color and I'm gonna go ahead and make it about as big as it looks like up there so like maybe that big and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer and I'm gonna clear all the layer styles for that bottom and then for this one I'm going to rasterize the layer style and what that's gonna do is like that makes the stroke part be able to be um, manipulated but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna delete the white part out of all of them. See what that looks like. 
So now that that is deleted, see how this one is like very filled in? It's almost like it's its own thing. So I can then take the paintbrush tool and I can go like this and fill it all in with that color. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a drop shadow and I'm gonna make it be in the same area because see like right here and inside of here, it's got that drop shadow and it's pretty not, it's pretty like not spread out. And then what I'm gonna do to make it be that same color is I'm gonna select that color and I'm gonna set it to be the opacity all the way up and to be normal. So that's gonna give it that exact color. And then I'm gonna make the size just a little bigger to kind of give it that buffed out look like it has above. And then I'm gonna do a bevel and emboss. Sometimes it doesn't look exactly how you want it to at the beginning, but that's okay. So I'm gonna change this to be like this one. Oh, that actually kind of worked pretty well already. Let's see, soften a little bit. Okay, we wanna soften a lot of it, I feel like. Okay, that looks good. And then if you notice like on there, it's a little bit more of like a purple instead of black. So I'm just gonna make it be like a dark blue purple. Yeah, that looks perfect. Okay, that is, okay, this is working a lot better than I thought it was. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna just hide that layer to so see how we have two layers now. The first one I'm gonna do is like, see how it kind of has this like blue highlight in the middle and then the two dark on both sides. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna make this whole selection here. So that way, anything that I do will be within the selection. And then I'm gonna add a gradient and we want it to be from this dark blue to the lightest color here in the middle. So I'm just gonna go like this. Let's see, let's see which side I'm on. Okay, that's the wrong side. So like this, we want the O to be pretty dark. So kind of more like that. And then what I'm gonna do is have it be just the dark blue or this side, maybe like. It goes pretty far under the E. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna just add that light bevel. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add yet another uh, layer to the outside. So see how this, there's one more layer, uh, one more drop shot or stroke on the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another stroke and I'm gonna make it be just like a generic color like that. I'm gonna make it be a little smaller and then I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna rasterize this entire layer style. And then I'm just gonna select the black part. So can't really tell here, but see how it's black. And I'm gonna delete it. And so what that'll do is that'll then let me uh, make that outside layer have that beveling on it like the other one. Okay, but first I'm gonna do this inner layer and I'm just gonna right double click. I'm gonna hit bevel and emboss. And we don't want it to be that big. So we want the depth to be way smaller, the softness to be way smaller. And honestly, I don't think we want the highlight on it at all. So I'm gonna down the opacity on that. We just want that little lower lip. So let me do the size down. Okay, perfect. So now when we layer it all, go back up here, it's looking pretty close. So now all we just have to do is do that outside layer and give that one also a bevel. So we're gonna go on here, go to bevel. This one we want the white to show, just like the other one. And I'm gonna make the size be a little, or the depth be a little bit bigger. Okay, that looks really good, actually. She's really good. Okay, I think we're actually done. Well, this looks really dope. I am happy with how that turned out. The last one I did is Mario Kart. This one actually has a ton of different variations of its logo. I decided to go with one of the more retro ones. So first what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna need to type out Mario Kart. The M and the A like go across from each other. We want everything kind of touching, except we don't want that touching. Okay, now everything is barely touching. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this M and I'm gonna 
make so that that M goes over top of the A, like that. And then I'm gonna rasterize this whole thing. And I'm gonna make it as big as that. And I'm gonna go ahead and select all the black parts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this yellow and I'm gonna, select, I'm gonna try it by selecting this kind of more red color. And just like on the Oreo one, I'm gonna do this gradient technique. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a black stroke. And again, just like the Oreo one, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that and delete the layer style on that one, rasterize the layer style on that one. So then I should be able to just grab everything in black. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill it in black. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add that bevel. And we want this one to be like crisp and hard. So I'm gonna do chisel hard and see what that looks like. Okay, actually it looks like the angle is like that way. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that quit and we're gonna go ahead and add the bevel to the background, which is much softer. So I'm gonna make this be smooth. That, it looks almost perfect, but now we're gonna see what we can do with these filters. So I'm gonna just go to filter gallery and I'm gonna go to texturize mosaic tiles maybe. All right, I know this isn't the exact texture, but it kind of gives the same kind of vibes to me. So I think I'm gonna be happy with how that turned out and uh, Let's call it a day from there. Honestly, I know the texture isn't perfect on this one, but it was hard to get that feel that it had in the original one. But overall, I'm happy with how this one turned out. This was so much fun to do on the live and get all of your interactions. So definitely join me in the next live if you want to have a say in which logos get made. Again, if you like this video, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you in the next one.